Hi everyone, this is my Ed Talk for this fantastic Valentine's Day Sunday. So happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Um, this is on chapters one through four, reaching and teaching students in poverty. Um, I just kind of pulled out some of the important ideas um, to me that kind of, I guess I, I call them aha moments. The first one is um, the inequalities. The book talks about the inequalities in how students are placed and the schools that they are surrounded by. The one, uh, one of the, the quotes that I got from the book that I found to be interesting was how, um, sorry, I say um, a lot, poor students are assigned, assigned uh, proportionately to the most inadequately funded schools with the largest class sizes and lowest paid teachers. That was interesting to me because it's, as we all know, it's kind of an oxymoron. Why are we putting students in schools who probably need better teachers, need better schools? We are putting them in um, worse off schools. What What is that doing for students? And I happen to work at a school that is lower income and we do try to do a lot for our students with who don't have a lot of money and I know that you guys have heard me say this before about programs and funding that we do through the school whether it be student lunches or um, after school programs for books in lieu of books so they don't have to pay for some books, we offer them in the library like every book in the school is offered in the library because we realize that they don't have the money to purchase them, uh, the one sum that they need. So I don't, like the author talks about this and how it's an injustice to our students and I totally agree. What would happen if we put these students, say Golden, some Golden Valley students in lower income areas and put them in West Ranch and gave them uh, the financial what, say, a, a normal student at West Ranch had uh, financially at home? What if we gave the same opportunity through the city, through a group, some sort of, um, some charity group gave them the same financial opportunities at school um, that, say, a West Ranch student had? I That, to me, was very interesting to think of possibly what that could turn out to be. Um, poverty. He talks, the author talks a lot about uh, poverty, well, a lot, obviously, um, poverty and students and their socioeconomic status. And then he goes into defining the different groups, poverty, working class, managerial class, middle class, owning class. Obviously, we have a perception of what poverty is. He talks about how people perceive poverty as just financial, like money straight up finances and nothing else. Uh, working class, he talks about, which this was interesting to me because working class is what I was my entire life. I went to hard high school. My dad owned his own tortilla route. And he talks about how working class, you barely are, you're able to afford things. Like my parents were able to afford the bare necessities at school, but one thing happens and say an injury, my brother played sports, we played sports, and that could knock you from working class to not being able to pay the bills, which happened to us a lot. Managerial is right above working class, isn't exactly middle class, and yes, they are able to afford the normal things at school and get by and have a little bit more money than the working class, and one like minor or major setback doesn't throw them potentially into a different class, middle class, and then owning class, they talk about how they have more access to resources, and it, like I've talked about the Golden Valley uh, West Ranch. You have a lot of working class and poverty students at that school, particular school, Golden Valley, and then you have middle class and owning class at West Ranch. And what I took from these three chapters or four chapters was, like I've already talked about, was what if we took a student from the poverty working class level and put them into a middle class owning class school 
and gave them the same opportunities. I realize that we can't at home pay for things, get them a new house. I'm not talking about you know, that type of thing. I'm talking about in the actual school, providing them with the financial resources, computer, um, things that they can bring home that would give them the same access and ability as, say, students at West, at West Ranch or Valencia High School. I did find a lot of this very interesting um, and eye-opening because I didn't really realize the difference between managerial class and middle class. The working class hit home with me, like I said, because that's kind of how I grew up. And I think I'm running out of time, and that's it.